Okay, we are going to reconvene and uh, this Board of Trustees reconvene to the regular Parish Union High School District Board meeting at 5.34 p.m. And uh, we are going to do the invocation, but before doing the invocation, uh, I'm going to be doing the Pledge of Allegiance, if everybody please stand. Please place your right hand over your heart. Let's begin. I, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Thank you. Be Thank you. Be seated. Thank you, Trustee Ellison. We are going to take a recess into the California Military Institute meeting at 5.36 p.m. Okay. Uh, this Board of Trustees reconvene for the regular Parish Union High School District Board meeting at 5.59 p.m. And we are going to start with an action item 8.1, that is the revision adoption of today's agenda. Do I have a motion? Mr. Garcia? Mr. Stafford? Please vote. And the agenda for this meeting has been approved 4 0. Information item 9.1, report out of closed session. No report out of closed session this evening. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. A district update by the superintendent is our next item. Thank you, Dr. Rouse. Um, I just wanted to share that our Parish High School District was recognized by the United Way, the GEMS program, which is Girls in Engineering, Math, and Science. Um, for hosting a pro We hosted the program at Pinnacotti this past summer with over 100 girls from all over different districts in, the, in our area came to Pinnacotti and they, they taught them all different ways to get involved in math, engineering, science. Because a lot of times the, the females are left, they don't jump into that area and it's trying to push girls into that. So it's a really neat program and it was good to see the girls there doing, doing different experiments and things like that. So that was, that was really neat to see. The uh, Paris High Medical Assisting Program run by Ms. Boros over there. Um, is a finalist for a Golden Bell Award from CSBA and will have a site validation visit in, in um, October. So we're excited about that and hopefully we'll see him there up at the CSBA conference getting an award, getting one of the Golden Bells. Um, last Saturday on the 16th, I was able to attend the Boys and Girls Club of Menifee Gala, where it's a, a huge fundraiser they do to be able to sponsor kids into the Boys and Girls Club afternoon program. So it was a very nice event. Uh, they talked about a little bit. Para, uh, we hosted the Ed Camp Paris on the September 9th, a couple weeks ago, on a Saturday. Joe and his team did a great job putting that together, doing a, what's called an unconference, where they, you show up and you figure out what you want to learn that day, and you put it on a board, and they they have sessions on it. So it was it was great to see. It wasn't just our district; it was people from other districts, surrounding communities, coming out and taking part in that. So it was another great event that put on by our district. They talked about a little bit again. Our, our, we have a, a crew of about 55 people heading out to the Excellence Through Equity Conference in Indian Wells the next two days. Um, both our administration and our certificated staff going out there to be part of that. 
So we're looking forward to it, and it's great to have our CMI representatives there going to be, be part of it. I think you're doing the color guard too, aren't you, Mr. Rhodes? So the CMI color guard will be presenting, and our student presenting, our superintendent, Dr. White. So it's a really cool event, and we're looking forward to that. And that concludes my report for this evening. Thank you, Mr. Bennett. The next item is an oral report, 9.3, student representatives to the Board of Trustees, Trustee Nellison. Excuse me. From Heritage High School, student representatives, Elena Ruiz and Ashley Garcia. Superintendent Mr. Bennett, members of the cabinet, President Aranx, and members of the board. My name is Ashley Garcia and this is Elena Ruiz. We'd like to show you some recent happenings at Heritage High School. We hope you enjoyed the pictures in our presentation. We had a fun spirit week this month. Things like Crazy Sock Day, Wacky Hair, and Hat Day, and Head to Toe made a very fun field school spirit week. The Legacy March is a traditional march we do to welcome the fall sports, ASB, band, cheer, and dance. We march around the whole school through buildings while the band is playing and the students dance and cheer. We do this three times a year, one for fall, winter, and spring. We also had our yearly Legacy, Mar Legacy ceremony where parents and mentors get to put on the decals on our, hel on our athletes' helmets. Lots of honor and pride in showing our Legacy here. Robotics had its kickoff this month. The challenge is now released, so it's time to focus our design and programming around these tasks. We had a great turnout for our back to school night this month. Parents and students got a chance to hear from their teachers while connecting to different organizations on campus. We also held our annual club rush, an opportunity for students to join multiple organizations on campus. Here's some other pictures of club rush. We hosted the Green Hand Conference again, and hundreds of students from other schools came to learn about Ag, FAFSA, FFA, I mean. <laughs> this is always a great opportunity for us to showcase our pro awesome program. A few of our teachers took several Heritage High School students to the historically black colleges and universities college fair. Students came back very motivated about all the different options that HBCU have to offer. Peer leaders unite in students had student forums last week. The topics were school stigmas and other social climate, climate concerns. Students were very open and shared some good feedback with our PLUS leaders. Football is 4-0 right now. Volleyball is 5-2 and two and finished second in Grand Terrace Tournament. Girls Tennis is 5-2 and two and beat Lakeside in League this week. Cross Country showed well in first Sunbelt League meet this week. Girls Golf is off to a good start at 4-2. and two. Boys water polo, water polo doing great representing Heritage. We also continue to grow our participation of parent groups. This month, we had Coffee with the Principal, a parent workshop on Infinite Campus Parent Portal, our English Learners Advisory Committee, and the African American Parent Advisory Council meeting. They were all well represented. Our classified staff member of the month is Stephanie Carhala, our food services lead. She does an amazing job, and she is passionate about her work. She has an awesome personality and is very friendly to all staff. We are proud to have her. Our Teacher of the Month is Ms. Christy Wakeman. She is not only a great teacher, but she is committed, a committed club advisor that goes to great lengths to help provide students opportunity to make an impact for others through the Make-A-Wish Foundation. We appreciate, we appreciate her very much. Dara Leo is our Student of the Month. She is currently in the running for valedictorian, and she has an amazing story of triumph and service. She is also the City of Champion for Character and will be honored at dinner next week. That's it for this month. Thank you for your continued support of Heritage High School. Thank you, Ashley and Elena. Excellent job. Yes, sir. Oh, yes. Uh, Trustee Nellison. I'll fill in for Ms. Twyman today. Uh, from Paloma Valley High School, student representatives, Marizel Karin and Haley Morton. Hi, 
good evening. We're representing Paloma Valley High School, and my name is Mara Zell. I'm the junior class president. And I'm Haley Morton, and I'm the senior class secretary. On August 9th, Paloma Valley as a whole came together to kick off the school year. We annually have a first day pep rally as a step in connecting with the students. ASB and administration of PBHS organize this activity. Students are encouraged to do their best and go beyond whether it's academically or related to sports. Our ASB leadership team met up over the summer and discussed our first spirit week that was called Hello Week. The Spirit Week was from August 14th to 18th, which was the first full week that we attended at school. Over these summer meetings, we decided to come up with a theme for the whole school year, which is The Magic Begins With Us. Our band, football, color guard, and pep, pep squad <laughs> come together every Friday morning to perform around the flagpole and get the crowd ready for the home varsity football game. During first period, band walks around campus and plays a tra traditional fight song and other songs they choose to play to represent our school. On September 8th, Paloma Valley High School was given the opportunity to host the big flag game ceremony. We had the flag for three years and the flag is 100 yards long and 53 yards wide. We're honored to have had the flag, this being the third consecutive year. Our NJROTC, ASB, and more than 10 clubs in sports were participating under the flag and around it. Um, on, from September 1st to September 3rd, 65 cadets earned their basic leadership training ribbon after spending the last 37 and a half hours learning, working, growing, and training. They spent two nights, Friday evening to Sunday afternoon, and concluded with a graduation ceremony. The combination of physical activities, tests, team building, exercises, and basic cadet knowledge um, was shown in this activity. They camped out in the gym, and family and friends were welcome to come and attend the ceremony and root on their team. Um, we had Club Rush on August 29th to 31st, and our commissioner of clubs, um, Miley Kamalei, said that it was, a, it was successful and we were able to get a lot of students to interact with clubs more often. We have more than 25 clubs on campus, including Campus Revolution, Key Club, Friday Night Live, Interact Club, Link Crew, and Black Student Union. Upcoming events. So we have homecoming, and ho homecoming is the week of October 16th to 21st, and our ASB team is working on it to make it an unforgettable experience. The day of the dance is on October 21st, and the day of the pep rally is on the 20th. Um, another upcoming event is Link Crew is in the middle of goal setting and working on helping the freshmen to gain realistic and achievement goals. In October, the same week as homecoming, they have a competition week where the freshman class will play PVHS trivia games, class banner competition, and Pictionary. The freshmen who receive the most points will win a trip to Universal Studios. And last but not least, um, our pink out game is against Lakeside on October 13th. And Paloma's ASB is collaborating with Lakeside's ASB. And we're going to decorate the stadium together on each other's home, home sides and show our school spirit and our support for those who have been diagnosed with breast cancer. Since it is an away game, um, we will be providing transportation from Paloma Valley to Lakeside, um, and we'll take them to the game and back home. And that's all we have for now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent job. Uh, Trustee Garcia. Yes, I'd like to introduce Paris High School student representatives, Brisada Cardenas and Victoria Nuno. Good evening, President Arauz and board members. And I'm sorry, I'm really nervous. Oh, Superintendent Bennett and Cabinet. Um, I am Brisada 
Cárdenas. Oh, and I'm Victoria Nino. And we will be your school board representatives from Paris High School. Now that Melissa has graduated, I will be taking her place and hopefully informing you guys of the unique events that are taking place on our campus. Um, the first event was on July 25th, where most students actually got to meet our new principal, Mr. Santos. He was surrounded by all our students in a room that didn't even know him. And it was pretty cool because we gave our input as to what we expect from him and what he expects from us. So that was really cool to get in touch with our principal. And on August 9th was our first day of high school. Well, like our first day back. Yay. <laughs> it was... It was exciting, but like at the same time, it's senior year, so you know, gotta get priorities, and so it's like really hectic right now. So, um, the next thing was on September 6th was our back to school night, where we actually had it in front of our new building. It was um, very nice because parents were treated by um, cheer and band, so they were like welcomed and in front of the new stage and hosted by a jamboree where parents could go purchase food and support clubs that they probably knew or didn't that their student might be involved in. And thank you, Mr. Bennett, for coming out to check out the jamboree. Um, on September 9th was our, well, our ASB officers attended a alumni banquet. And a big thanks to the alumni because they, we sold, like, Spirit for Paris High there, so, like, that was pretty cool. And another very special moment happened when ASB officers, class of 2018, met a class of 1948 graduate and shared personal stories about high school. That's a 70-year seven year graduation span between the two. Also, on September 14th, our senior class hosted our first major event, which was our senior grad fair. Uh, the uh, at this night event, parents and students had the opportunity to meet with various graduation item suppliers as well as with different community groups who were there. We had made we had major groups such as Jocelyn, Cherished Memories, the U.S. Army, Parent Educate, er, Parent Engagement Center, Operation Life Lifesaver, Fair Tux, and Paris Modern Dentistry. They were just some of the major groups, along with others that attended. On September fifteenth, our Paris High School Link crew hosted the freshman. Freshman Friday Assembly, with the help of various students and clubs. The theme was to introduce sports and clubs. Um, we had a very great turnout. There were a bunch of freshmen that attended and loved the performances that each clubs and teams promoted. Um, on September 22nd, we are having our homecoming football game. Um, so come out and support Paris High taking on Banner High School. Um, at halftime, we will announce the royalty winners along with the candidates. And the theme for this year is Hawaiian Homecoming, Paradise in Paris. Um, so, follow us on Twitter <laughs> at Paris, Paris underscore ASB to keep up with the daily activities taking place. Thank you so much for your time and have a great evening. Thank you, Briseida and Victoria. Uh, Trustee Stafford. From Pano County Middle School, we have Delilah Martinez and Janelli Meza Vergara. Good evening, President Dr. Rose, school board members, Mr. Bennett, and members of the cabinet. I am Janelli Meza, Pina Cotti's ASB president, and with me today is... Delilah Martinez, the Pina Cotti ASB seventh grade representative. A big Puma welcome to... To Mr. Borbo and Mr. Klo, our two new assistant principals, they helped us get the year going right. August 1st, our 8th grade Pumas came and picked up their schedules, textbooks, PE clothes, and spirit wear. On August 2nd, the Pinnacotti web team welcomed our new 7th grade Pumas. They gave them tours on the campus led small groups in team-building activities, and helped our newbies to feel connected to Pinacati. Pinacati, Pumas are now in houses. 
Each student is in a house. The students' houses are based on the student grades and team of teachers. The houses will compete for points on a new system, point system called Red Critter, a cooler version of Hero Points. The houses will celebrate the academic success of their members with the house rallies next week, sponsored by Webb and the PBIS team. Each day's clubs and activity is listed for easy reference. Students, parents, and staff can access it all week long. Fall Sports Rally ASB presented two rallies, September 19th to recognize the flag football team, cross-country team, girls volleyball team, and a tackle football team. The Puma band played the cheer team cheered. Puma spirit was over the top. The energy at the event was amazing. Check out the Peak of the Week every week for more events and activities. We would like to leave you with this thought. How wonderful it is that nobody need a wait, wait a single moment before starting to improve the world. And Frank. Thank you. Thank you, Delilah and Janelli. And now from Paris Lake High School, let's welcome our students' reps, Sara Mejia, Wendy Alvarez, Caleb Cook, Adam Garcia, and Arlene Gonzalez. Good evening, Governing Board and Cabinet members. My name is Adam Garcia. I am a member of Paris Lake High School's ASB. Standing beside me are my fellow ASB members, Arlene Gers Gonzalez, Sarah Mejia, Caleb Cook, and Wendy Alvarez. I want to thank the Governing Board and the Cabinet and Superintendent Bennett for inviting us here to share the events at the lake. August 9th, our first day back to school, was really busy with so many new and returning students <laughs> attending the lake. There were up to 42 students in each classroom. In each classroom, but we all uh, but we all positively managed to keep it happen, to keep it happen, and uh, focus on learning. Many thanks to both the students and staff for being positive and cooperative. We had an amazing outcome for our open house event. There were numerous parents and families, guardians who came to see how their students were have been progressing. We also had the district nutritionist, nutritionist share important information with parents regarding the school meals. Just recently, our SB program sponsored our first Spirit Week of, us, of September. Our themes included Sports Day, Disney Day, which personally was my favorite, 50s Day, and our Concrete Rose Day. Our activities during lunch ranged from water balloon toss games, hula hoop contests, musical chairs themed to 50s music, and a pudding cup feeding challenge. We had a lot of fun participating, and we really appreciated all the students for being very, very cooperative during all the events. <clears throat> On Thursday, September 14th, Mr. Bryan held workshops to assist students with subway job interviews. With this workshop, many students applied and interviewed at a local store. Thanks to Mr. Bryan, we were able to have this opportunity and give employment to some of the students at Paris Lake. Last week, we addressed Suicide Prevention Week by showing support to our fellow peers and helping each other in any way possible. By being such a small school, thankfully, we are able to communicate with one another and allow our students to get the proper support they need in order to help them with any issues or problems they may be going through. We made posters of special meaningful messages along with hotlines to get the proper support from professionals. We joined in on doing a balloon release to honor those who have lost or experienced this dilemma. The field trip was the FNL Youth Summit, which was held at the Anaheim Hilton Convention Center. We had a great time. We attended different workshops on a variety of topics such as drug prevention, mental illness, suicide prevention, bullying, and developing leadership. We had a fun time riding in the district van and ate some good food. Thank you for the opportunity to share a few moments of youth from Paris Lake.
Okay. Thank you, Sarah, Wendy, Arlene, Caleb, and Adam. Excellent job. Thank you. Okay. So we are going to go to our next uh, item, information item, 9.1. P before going to the 9.1, we are going to give the opportunity to the students, if you desire to leave, this is your opportunity. You can uh, leave right now. You can stay here. You are welcome to stay, but you can, you can go home, do your homework. <laughs> I just know that in the past I forgot that people always look at me. Yeah. No, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, we are going to continue with our with our board meeting. In uh, item 9.4, PSEA President, Ms. Vicky Mueller. That was not a good view, huh? Okay, so I have my computer this time so I can see it better than my phone. Good evening, Dr. Thoreau. Uh, cabinet or board members, Dr. Superintendent Bennett. I don't know why I'm nervous tonight done this how many times now cabinet members thank you again for allowing me to have this time to speak first off I want to say how proud I am to be president of PSEA along with myself and my second VP Kim Freeberg we worked very hard with our site representatives and the district to make sure that we reach out to all incoming teachers to have them become members of PSEA as a result, I was told that PSEA has the lowest number of non-members in our CTA district. Let me just put it this way. It's single digits, under 10. So that's pretty impressive when you think about it because there are some districts that have, you know, up to 50 to 60 um, teachers that are not members of their, their local. So I just want to say... Thank you, because I don't think we would have been able to do that without having the new teacher day, um, having the packets that we've put together. And I just want to say thank you, because without you, this is a group effort, you know, to do this. Um, PSC leadership has asked that I say also how happy we are to have Mr. Skorpanich with us and that he has a breath of fresh air. We would also like to say thank you to the district, to Marilyn, for including us in the administrator mission and vision training that we were invited to, and thank you. Um, it's been a busy six weeks. PSEA has hosted two Friday luncheons for members at Heritage High School and Paris High School. There's been a breakfast at Paloma and a dessert luncheon at, at Options, Paris Lake. Um, at each of those events, we put up a piece, two pieces of poster paper. And we have what's rad, what's not so rad. Um, one site we had pluses and deltas. Um, we had needs and wants. So what we're doing every time we do that is we're compiling that data. And we're encouraging the members then to take that to their site reps or their SRCs. And then some of it is PRC related. So we're going to be taking the, then to PRC. But what came out in all of those, there was a central thread, and that was what a good start to the school year it was. They felt that it was a very calm, a very well rolled out school year. And I, I attribute that to you, Mr. Bennett, that everyone was very well prepared. And so that was the one thing that came out. Are there some issues? Um, but the positives were far greater than the negatives, so I think you need to hear that too. Um, PSEA held a training at the CTA office in San Bernardino for our new site representatives, 
And we focused on the grievance process, making sure that they're trained and understand how to write them. We're going to be attending a training, uh, CTA training in Rancho Mirage at the Omni Rancho Las Palmas Resort and Spa at the end of September. So somebody was saying, oh, wait, to see where we're going. I'm like, yeah, we go to good places, too. Um, but I just want to mention some of the sessions that we're going to be going to. One is um, centered on generation student, uh, generation student loan debt, uh, school to prison pipeline, pledging allegiance and free speech, LCFF and LCAP. And that's just a few. There's, there are several more of that. Um, I'm personally attending several of these, so um, I hope to come back with some information that we can share. Um, so we have, I've got been given the dates for, the name of it just went out of my head, the one in February, the training that we sent teachers to last year with the district. I'll come up with it. Yeah, that training. Um, uh, I'll come up with it. I'll say it. Huh? No, no. This is the one where um, we partnered with the district. Good teaching conference. Yeah, I already have the dates for the good teaching conference. Good, good um, sessions also that they're going to have there. Several on classroom management, um, how the new, how to approach new things that are going on. So anyway, um, we'll talk. Um, I know we partnered last year to do that. Um, our next luncheon will be at Paris Lake and Ed Options um, and at Pinnacotti in October. Um, there's been some talks about enrollment and how it's changing. It seemed to be a moving target. Um, declining enrollment here, increasing enrollment there. There's a lot of, you know, nervous people out there, and so um, we're just trying to keep keep everyone calm. All right. Um, so that's it for my presentation today. I hope you enjoyed it. So, thank you. Thank you, thank you Ms. Mueller. In the next uh, items, 9.5 CSEA President Helen Stegman. Good evening, President Dr. Arouse, board members, Superintendent Bennett, Cabinet, and my fellow classified members, and everyone else here this evening. Hello, my name is Helen Stymack. Just a few days ago, I assumed the presidency of the CSEA Chapter 469. Although saddened to see Cinda Sarian leave, I am happy that she has attained a promotional position in another district, Temecula Valley, and I wish her all the best. A year and a half ago, I stood before you to receive a very distinguished honor of a RAVE Award. I stand before you tonight in much the same way. It is with pride and humility that I, I am afforded an opportunity to represent all classified employees of this district. I am honored to take on this new responsibility, and I am ready and willing to continue working with this district to achieve a common goal to, by strengthening the relationship between CSEA and the district. Thank you for this time this evening, and I look forward to giving you many positive reports from our chapter in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Steinmeck. The next item, 10.1, invitation to address the Board of Trustees on agendized and non-agendized items. No takers today. So we go to the next one. That is an action item. That is our consent calendar. Do I have a motion? Mr. Nelson, Second. Mr. Stafford, please vote. <coughs> and the consent item for this meeting has been approved 4-0. 
Item 12.1, 2017 California Assessment of Student Progress and Performance Results Presentation. And at this time, I'd like, uh, actually, he's here already, Charles Tippy, uh, our Director of Learning Support Services, who's going to give us um, actually two presentations. First, start with the California Assessment for Student Progress and Performance Results, which is our CASP, and then he will follow up with the um, Professional Development Days Report. Thank you. Good evening, President Norales, honorable members of the board, Superintendent Bennett, and district cabinet members. Um, I have the pleasure of sharing the 2017 um, CAS results with you, or we could start with the PD, whatever we want to go with. But it's the, yes, it's the, <clears throat> so I have the pleasure of sharing the 2017 CAS results with you, and I'll also go over how those test scores will go into the um, new LCAP accountability system. So we'll kind of look at, at both systems. We are shifting to a new, new way of measuring school performance and district performance. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and jump right in. We'll look at English language arts first. I know there's a lot of information on this screen, but if you take your attention to the upper left-hand side of the screen, that is an overall snapshot of how we've done on the Smarter Balance Assessments and ELA for the last three years. So it combines uh, grades five through eight in our district and grade 11. You can see that in the 2017 school year, we did make significant progress from last year, and then it brings us up a little bit more um, higher than we were in the 2015 school year. So um, in this graph, same thing, red is bad, green is good, and blue is the new green. So there's uh, four different performance levels. Um, we wanna see more green and blue and less red. And uh, you can see that in, in the 2017 school year. I'm also going to kind of point out highlights of the different subgroups. These are our, our ethnic subgroups. And um, the, the graph to the right, you can see the African-American uh, subgroup made significant progress. Uh, we decreased the percentage of students at the level one uh, band from 43% to 347 So that's significant. And also increased uh, the percentage of students at the level three and four. Um, the other subgroups kind of followed a lot, of, a lot of the slides. You'll see consistent patterns with the overall score. So I'm going to kind of point out the, the, the highlights. Uh, another big one for us in English language arts are English learners made significant progress. So you can see that we decreased um, a lot of red with our English learners. So these students are still uh, acquiring proficiency in English. So the scores always tend to be lower. Um, but we decreased the percentage of students at level one, the standard knot, uh, and cut that down from 81% to 59.1. And then um, if you even compare 2015, it's significantly lower. And then we also saw um, an increase of students at the standard met and standard exceeded for our ELs. RFEP stands for Reclassified Fluent English Proficient Student. So these are students who at one time were English learners. Uh, they made significant progress and tested out of the program. And you're going to see this in the new California assessment system. A lot of times what happened, the kids in the EL subgroup would make progress. And then once they make progress, we kick them out. We don't kick them out, but we promote them out. And then they're no longer in that subgroup, so we had to start over again. So the new system for LCAP, um, combines those two students, it reports it separately, but does combine them. So uh, great job for these students. Um, our students with disabilities, you can similar patterns to the overall year. We did make improvements from last year, getting close to uh, where we were in 2015. And then SED stands for socioeconomically disadvantaged students. These are students that qualify for free and reduced lunch or uh, neither parent has graduated high school. And similar patterns, made improvements from last year, and sometimes a little bit better than 2015. Uh, mathematics didn't have a, a good year, but uh, we've been saying that 2017-18 is the year of math. We've done a ton of work with curriculum and training. I'm going to talk about that in, in a few more slides here. Um, but you can see our, our math scores have decreased, um, and we are working hard and that's similar for the overall as well as, as the different subgroups. Uh, our EL students, we did decrease the number of students at the level one band for EL, so that, that's a good, good thing. Um, 
and our RFEP students didn't fare as well. For students with disabilities and SED, pretty similar to the overall group, we haven't seen much progress um, and declined for the SED. So I have shifts in, in California accountability. Some of those slides are pretty depressing. Um, and what I like about the new shift is it focuses on two things. So it focuses on status. That's getting kids where they need to be. So getting kids in the level three and four, we want them performing we want them meeting the standards. But it also looks at change. So, and it's a combination of the two. You, you have to have both. Um, there's a very fancy grid that puts it in, into that, and I'm gonna show you some examples and kind of explain how that works. But once again, we're looking at status and change. So this is all based on the level three threshold. So one of the nice things about the Smarter Balance Assessments is it's a vertical assessment. So you can compare test scores and measure progress for students going all the way back from third grade through 11th grade. So you're gonna notice over to the left, the skilled score uh, range for third grade 2114 to 2623, and then it increases all the way down to 11th grade. What this California system does now is it takes the lowest possible score for a standard MET or the, the basically college readiness, and then it measures the distance from that point. So we'll look at a couple of examples and, and see how that looks. So if you look at school A here, made up school, um, elementary school A in fifth grade, you're gonna see the level three threshold score is 2502. That's the lowest score you can get to be a level three of standard MET. Um, in 2017, school A got a 25-22, and that's a distance of 20 points from that level three threshold. Elementary school B, you'll see the same threshold score, 2502. It's consistent across the grade levels for all students. They scored a 2500, and that's a negative two. So they were negative two points away from that threshold mark. Uh, middle school, sixth grade, it's a higher score because as the kids move through the grade levels, they have to score higher. What, the threshold was 2572. That school got a 2595, and they were 23 positive points away from that threshold. The change, a little bit easier to, to kind of comprehend, this compares the average scaled score of the school, the grade level, or the subgroup, compares the current score with the previous score. So in the example here, elementary school A, um, the 2015-16 score was 2540, 16-17 score was 2520, and that's a negative change of minus 20. School B, 2580 to 2600, that's a positive 20, and so on and so forth. So when we calculate the dashboard designation, you have to look at both the status and the change. So in this hypothetical example, school A had a positive status of 47, so as a school, the average scale score was 47 points above that threshold level. However, they had a change of negative 20, and that's gonna put them in the yellow category. Uh, we do another example, school B. They were a negative two above that threshold, so that puts them in medium. However, they had a 20 point change, so that's gonna land them down here in a green. So this is really good news, especially for a lot of our groups and some of our schools, that it allows us to accomplish the green and eventually the blue as we keep working hard and, and getting better. Uh, let's see another example here, school C, they had a positive 23 um, and they increased two points so to maintain, so that put them in a green as well. And then school D didn't fare so well, they had negative seven and negative 30, they're in the red, and school E, this might be for our EL students that are um, low on the status range, but we saw a lot of improvement. They could still get into the yellow um, category. So what I did here, um, the state won't release this until December. So I have some estimates that we took from our, our assessment database program and kind of calculated what they would be. So you see the different grade levels here um, for the academic indicator at the middle school. And this is gonna be calculated separately for grades three through eight and then for grade 11. So you can see um, all of our um, category or grade levels at the middle school level went up. Uh, CMI grade st seven stayed the same at a yellow. Uh, they started off at the status level of low, um, but all increased and then Pinnacotti uh, eighth grade maintained. Uh, for math, 
once again, uh, similar to what we saw, um, very low on the status and increased for CMI 6 and CMI 8. But those, uh, the others will stay in the red. Uh, when we look at the college and career indicator, these are calculated at the school level. Um, you can see that uh, some of the, the schools change slightly, so they're at different spots. CMI 11th grade would be a high. Uh, they increase, so that put them in green. And then uh, Paloma uh, was at a high, maintained, and that moved them from an orange to a green. Um, I was able to do subgroups for the 11th grade. Wasn't able to do that for the middle school because there's a whole bunch of different calculations that go into it. But big one on this, the EL subgroup increased significantly. When you're looking at the change, if we go back a few slides, the increase significantly is 20 points as a group. Uh, the ELs did 50, so they doubled down on that, so that was really good. And then the reclassified fluent English proficient students, they also increased significantly, went from a green to a blue. Uh, 11th grade math, um, as we saw before, very low status, and then there were declines for the most part. Uh, subgroups, we did have good news for the ELs again. Uh, they increased significantly at 20 points and went from a red to a yellow. So um, when we spent a lot of times, I only had a 10 minute presentation for you tonight and, and an overview, but we had work with our teachers and our, our administrators look through the data significantly. And um, I wanted to highlight some of the actions and the plans that we're gonna do with the data. So we look at the data, what do we do next to improve student instruction? So there's a couple of big things. Uh, we had continued training on professional learning communities. So we're working with teachers in that process to um, analyze student achievement data and identify best practices for in improving instruction. We had all of our English and math teachers trained on smarter balance alignment and item types. We have increased our reading intervention sections from, we had 12 sections two years ago and we're up to 28 with a uh, brand new state adopted curriculum. And we've had over 40 coaching sessions with our instructional coaches working with teachers one-on-one -on -one or a small group setting. And then this is year one of our full implementation of our state board adopted programs in both ELA and math. So we adopted new curriculum for the grades five through eight, and then um, all of our math courses, algebra all the way through algebra two, uh, the middle school, have done tons of work. We've had teacher groups come into SSC two or three times a week for the last, I don't know how long, um, and teachers have worked together, identified standards, targets, um, just a lot of work fighting over questions and and really analyzing the standards to increase student achievement. So I think we'll see some good things this year. Um, I did have links to all of the comprehensive data reports. So each school has a profile, 50, 60 pages, that has the data broken down by grade level, subgroups, claims, targets, and, and all that. So that's listed in the, in the presentation. And that concludes this presentation. Any questions I could address? Thank you, Mr. TP. Thank you. So our next presentation, uh, just a quick recap of the professional development that we had on August uh, 3rd and 4th of this year. We had um, all of our district employees come together for two days of professional learning, and we just wanted to provide some highlights here. Uh, some numbers, we had 800, approximately 837 staff members present, so all of our, our Members, we had 22 guest presenters. We had people from RCOE, Riverside Sheriff, Cave, uh, Key Data Systems, Hewitt Mifflin Hartcourt, Pearson. Uh, a lot of guest presenters come in and share their knowledge with our, our staff. Uh, we also had 46 of our own uh, classified certificated members from different um, categories leading sessions, and you can see them in some of the pictures here. Um, some of the highlights, one of the big ones, school safety, and, and thank you, uh, kudos to at Risky Judy. Um, <clears throat> I ignored some of her phone calls, but we were on the phone a lot uh, <clears throat> prior to PD. She did a great job of bringing in, um, she worked with the sheriff and, and got or groups in to work with our campus supervisors. We had sessions for all staff on human trafficking, emergency response kits, science safety, and Keenan. 
Um, just a really a lot of great feedback from staff. Um, our other big focus for our teachers was on, once again, professional learning communities. So we had uh, Dr. Luis Cruz come in from um, Solution Tree to work with our teachers on the PLC process. So all of our teachers as a school, they par participated in a half day training with Dr. Cruz, uh, once again, on analyzing student achievement and data and what do we do when students are struggling. Um, these are all of the different course offerings that we had. So once again, just a really good variety of different offerings for our staff. And um, that pretty much concludes that part. And I, I want to give Charles kudos for the, what the work he did too. He does basically the master schedule for this whole program and they had up to 12 sessions each staff member could have over two days with 837 people. It's, it's a huge thing that he does every year for us. Next year we're buying a book though, right? <laughs> Thank you, Mr. TP. Okay. It's not saying well. Uh, the next item is an information item, 13.1, is the discipline report for the month of August. 14.1 uh, is an action item. Uh, resolution 6.17.18, trustee compensation for Ms. Minutes. So Mr. Garcia, we are going to ask him to leave for a few minutes. So once again, this is the resolution number 16, 17, 18, a trustee compensation for Ms. meetings for Mr. Garcia. Uh, do I have a motion? So moved. Mr. Nellison? Second. It's got to be. It's gotta be. Yeah, it has to be Mr. Stafford. <laughs> okay, please vote. This uh, item has been approved. Three votes in favor and one abstention. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. Welcome back. The next item, 14.2, is an action item, personnel, certificated personnel action items. Do I have a motion? Mr. Nellison, Mr. Garcia, please vote. Fourteen point two has been approved four zero. Fourteen point three is an action item for classified personnel action items. Mr. Garcia and Mr. Stafford, second. Please vote. The classified personnel action item has been approved for zero. The next one in 14.4 is a personnel action item. is the adoption of resolution number 81718, week of the school administrator. Do I have a motion? Mr. Garcia and Mr. Staff for second. I'd like to make Mr. Sure. Um, the CDE encourages that school districts recognize our, the work of our school administrators much like we, we do our other employees. In, in the spring, typically we recognize our teachers and other certificate employees and also our classified employees. So this uh, week in October is dedicated under the California Education Code actually as a week to recognize school administrators. I'm sorry. Uh, this uh, administrator week of the school administrator this year is going to be October 8th to the 14th. So we have we have the two motions. Please vote. Fourteen point two 
14.4 has been approved for zero. 14.5 is also an action item personnel declaration of need for fully qualified educators for the 17-18 school year. Do I have a motion? Mr. Nellison, trust, Trustee Stafford. There any questions or comments? No? Okay, please vote. Action item 14.5, approve 4 0. 14.6 is also an action item curriculum adoption of resolution number 51718, public hearing and resolution for pupil textbook and instructional materials compliance regarding sufficiency of instructional materials for the fiscal year 1718. Do I have a motion? I scroll down, but I didn't see it. It doesn't look like a public hearing. It is? Oh, okay. Okay, okay. Okay. Okay, okay. So what we are going to do then, uh, I'm going to open uh, this uh, uh, meeting for a public hearing regarding action item 14.6, that is a curriculum. Uh, adoption of resolution 51718, this public hearing uh, and resolution for pupil textbook and instructional materials compliance regarding sufficiency of instructional materials for fiscal year 1718. And I'm opening this public hearing at 6.54 p.m. Do we have any comments, any input regarding this curriculum item? Okay. So you still are going to have like 45 more seconds to see if you change your mind and go like to <laughs> provide any input. Okay, uh, this public hearing is closed at 6.55 p.m. Now we are going to come back to a regular board meeting and we, do I have a motion to approve this uh, action item? So moved. Trustee Nellison, uh, Trustee Stafford, please vote. Fourteen point six action item has been approved for zero. Let me see, it's not open. No. The next action item is fourteen point seven building and grounds. Approval of resolution number seven seventeen eighteen and school facilities funding and mitigation agreement, Paris Union High School District and METS and A L P for Villa Verona Apartment Community. Do I have a motion? So Trustee Nellison? Second. Second. Trustee Stafford? Please vote. I, I can give you I some information okay. if you'd like. Okay. Um, this is a mitigation agreement. Um, I, I believe we've briefed you about this yeah. um, in the past because it's been a, a very long oh, okay. <laughs> process, but we, we did finally reach a, an agreement with the developer at the, the property at Metz and A Street. Um, that's a 360-unit apartment um, complex, you know, just up the street from CMI. And so uh, we were very adamant that um, putting in those apartments and increasing the traffic um, on A Street um, was an impact um, to, to A Street and to the CMI campus. Um, the city conditioned the developer to widen A Street um, and we're very grateful for our partnership and working relationship with the city because they worked with us in, in also conditioning the developer to work with the school district to mitigate their impacts to our site. Um, by widening A Street, they're going to take um, approximately 27 feet from the frontage um, of CMI, and you could see how that would significantly impact 
um, you know, the site. They've got parking up in the front there. So this um, mitigation agreement um, provides um, us $800,000, uh, which is more than the developer fees we would have collected. It uh, mitigates their impact. And what's very nice, uh, oh, he left for CMI, is uh, <laughs> they, we will have a, a much longer parent-child drop-off area. It will actually exit out on Metz Road instead of on A Street now. There'll be a signal put in by the developer for on A um, and Metz, and um, it will redo and relocate, um, redo both parking lots, relocate um, another parking lot. So that's great news um, for CMI, and um, it's been a long, long process. Um, we were at two city council meetings. Granted, the, I, we've, I've been calling him the closer. Uh, <laughs> so uh, anyway, we're, we're glad to finally have this this agreement. Excellent. Thank you, Ms. Reigns. Do we have any questions, any comments? Just um, thank you for putting in that effort with uh, the city council that uh, Grant and you and Candace that you guys went and did that. And we, we're still going to deal with that choke point down at, uh, I guess, 4th Street at yeah, at some point, but we're almost there. So uh, it's been a great job you're doing with that. Yeah. So thank you very much. Yeah, the city did mm -hmm. indicate that as other developers come in, they would condition them to, you know, kind of finish off um, A Street. So it's always a careful balance with development. You okay. know, we, we want it to come in, but um, we don't want to create problems um, on the streets or at our schools. So. It's going to be a little tougher up at the other end of A Street towards um, towards 4th the because there's houses yeah. already there, so it's some of it may be some eminent domain stuff that they may have to do with, unless they have an easement onto that property also. Yeah. And no plans for across the street from the apartment building? Not as of yet. Nothing. The, they don't have anything in the um, planning commission for the city to, for developing that property at this time. Okay. Okay, thank you. Any other comments or questions? Trustee Nelson, Trustee Garcia? Okay, so please vote. Let me go back. Okay, now we are there at 14.7, right? Okay. Action item 14.7 has been approved 4 0. Information item 15.1 building and grounds plan to file career technical education facilities program application for projects at Paris High School. if you'd like. Um, yeah, new funding was just released. This is round three of CTE facilities money. The last round was in 2009, I think, if I'm not mistaken. That's what we applied for and built the Heritage High School Agricultural Research Center with. Uh, and so we would like to um, apply most likely for two projects at Paris High School um, in their agricultural uh, facilities as well um, to uh, offset some of the costs for the PACE building um, that would allow us to then use those funds as matching funds for a second project and get uh, started faster on completing uh, the master plan at Paris High School. Uh, there is um, word that there will be a fourth round of funding um, next year and uh, Hopefully, if um, our plans progress as, as we're hoping or thinking, you know, they might in, in facilities planning, like we talked in our July or your July study, study session, um, it would allow us to apply for funds um, for the visual and performing arts um, at the front of, of Paris High School, um, just in keeping with what we, we've done for the last many years, decades, um, apply for every funding source that's available and out there. So for the city funding, Ms. Reigns, are these matching funds? Or you do have to have matching funds. Matching and so we're fortunate in this case yeah, because the, yeah. the building is currently under construction, and so we would then have those matching mm -hmm. funds. Exactly. And so if we were to get the first grant I spoke of, we could then reallocate some of those funds to then be the matching funds you know, for the second application. So that's, that's how we leverage funds mm -hmm. um, and make the most of what we can get. All right, thank you. Any comments or questions? Okay, so this was an information item. We go to the next uh, item, also is information, business, a revolving cash report for the month of August 2017. 
uh, information item 15.3 board policies philosophy goals objectives and comprehensive plans series 000 15.4 board policies community relations series at 1000 uh, board policies, 15, uh, uh, item 15.5 is an information item, board policies, administration, series 2000. 15.6, information, board policies, business and non-instructional operations. 15.7, board policies, board bylaws. Do we have any comments on that? Mr. Yes, Stafford. Um, on the 9,000 series, the board policies, the electronics, uh, yes. part of that. Um, with the law changing, and now we're going to be implementing that. Uh, that start date is it when the first of the year, or when does that start? Or is it implemented Dave, already? Yeah. But anyway, um, it requires that uh, we su we, we personally, we use our own personal devices at, at this point. Mm -hmm. um, after this law is in effect and, and, and current, uh, I believe the district should provide us with electronic communication devices. I'm not willing to use my cell phone or co-mingle my computer or any of my devices with the school districts. Uh, so I would request that we have a discussion about that and uh, come up with some ideas. Joe, I think your technology so you would be able to advise us on how we're going to proceed. And we're going to we're going to get some direction from legal counsel on this to make sure that we're, we're mm -hmm. what the intent of the law is and then how we have to proceed from here. So we'll get that information to mm -hmm. you before next month when it comes up for a vote. Okay, very good. Yeah. Uh, I just want to add that I join uh, Mr. Trustee Staff for on that uh, on that request. Yeah, thank you. Okay, any other comment or input? Uh, well, I just want to make sure they can't confiscate our phones, and <laughs> and that'd be a you know. Yes, so if we're if we're doing school business or district business, excuse right. me, I'm I'm in agreement with uh, Trustee Stafford and yourself. Okay, thank you, sir. Trustee Nelson. I fourth of that motion. So so I'm curious to hear what you guys have to find out next month. Okay, thank you, sir. So we are going to move then to the next uh, item. That is a action item, 16.1, and is uh, to go to closed session if necessary. Not necessary, President Rao. Thank you, Mr. Superintendent. And, uh, well, there was no need to go to closed session. Uh, action item 18.1 is the discipline, reinstatement of student discipline matters. Uh, do I have a motion? Trustee Nelson, Trustee Garcia, do you have any comments or input on this item? No? Okay. Please vote. Action item 18.1 has been approved for zero. 18.2 also is an action item. A discipline board review of discipline matters. Do I have a motion? So moved. Trustee Nelson. Second. Trustee Stafford. Please vote. Eighteen point two approved four zero. Next item is an information item. Other items by our superintendent. I don't think I have anything else this evening. I think I've done enough. Thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and 20.1, other items by the Board of Trustees. Trustee Garcia. Yes, um, I'd like to thank Paloma High for the invitation for the flag ceremony I did attend. I apologize I had to leave early. My kids couldn't handle the rain. I apologize. But I do ask that, you know, we as a board members, not only do we serve our community, we serve you guys. And we're here to, you know, attend wherever we can to help you out let us know and send us those invitations we want to come to your schools we want to get to know you and your students as well and mr santos it's good to see you and uh i saw you this morning actually you're doing a great job keep it up thank you sir trustee garcia uh, trustee stafford no. trustee nelson 
I also wanted to thank Mr. Tomasian for the invitation to the uh, big flag ceremony. I did come out and it did start raining, but it wasn't that bad. But uh, I was able to stick for the stick around for the rest of the game. <laughs> I also didn't have kids there, so. But I appreciate the uh, the invitation. I always enjoy. I've come to last for the last three years, and I enjoy the especially the big flag. So thank you. Okay, I just want to say thank you also to all the teachers, administrators, and cabinet for the effort that was done last year to get the results on the CASP in ELA and the, the increases that, that we had. Uh, also, we have acknowledged the need uh, that we have for math, but we already have a plan, right? So that is, uh, that is great. So this is a team effort, and uh, I just want to say thank you for everything that you do for our students. And thank you, Mr. Yeah, for making that, uh, Mr. TP, for making the presentation uh, on the CASP. And I'm looking forward for the next presentation in terms of the other elements of student achievement that uh, we consider really important, like the AP uh, percent of students that are passing their AP classes, percent of students meeting the A through G requirements from last year, 16 uh, 7, uh, 17, as well as the high school graduation rates at the district level and by sites, as well as a uh, desegregated by demographics, because that is so so important. That's what we are all about, right? But to the results. And that's what it has an impact on individual students and members of our community. So thank you for for, uh, for everything that you have been doing. Okay. So we go to the last item that is 21.1, it's adjournment. Uh, so we want to adjourn this regular uh, meeting. Second, <laughs> Trustee Nelson, <laughs> Trustee Stafford. Let's yeah. Please vote, please vote. And this item, 21.1, action item has been approved. Four zero. <laughs> Thank you and uh, good night. This uh, meeting uh, ends at seven o nine p.m.